Welcome back to the Stuff About Money podcast. I am Eric Garcia, certified financial planner, your co-host, joined by the one, the only, Xavier Angel, CFP. What's up, Javi? Javi, just so y'all know, Javi's his Spanish name. You know, he works around a bunch of Spanish people, so um, we call him Javi around here. Javi, what's up? Dude, you got my daughter calling me Javi now. My daughter walks around the house, Javi, Javi, Javi. I'm like, Grace, really? So yes, I've I've taken on that name from being around a bunch of uh, Hispanics over the past three and a half years. It's beautiful, isn't it? It it is. It is, especially the the, the Cuban culture. I've learned so much about the Cuban culture. All right, give me give me um, one thing, man. What's one thing that you've learned to appreciate about my people? The Cuban sandwich. I'm very particular in in the Cuban sandwich now. Yes. Oh man, delicious, delicious. So, Found a great restaurant uh, downtown. Um, went to okay. it. So, all right, good all stuff. Right. Oh yeah, you did some. Good. We're not here to talk about how yeah, wonderful yeah. Cubans are, right? <laughs> That's not what we're here for. Um, we are here to talk about. Oh man, I, I kind of fought. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, guys. I fought this a little bit to talk about this topic. Um, hopefully, we could talk about it from a different light. But resolutions, I don't like personally. This is me. I don't like resolutions. I don't make resolutions anymore. I used to make a lot of resolutions. I don't do it anymore. But it's 2024. It's a new year. You can't get away from the internet without seeing 2024 resolutions. 2024 resolutions, right? Xavier, what do you think? I, you well, think I, think, I think it, 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 Eric is against resolutions. Where most people are, are setting their resolutions to go to the gym, Eric canceled his gym I membership. Did. I did. Awesome. I'm swimming up, swimming upstream. Yeah, he's then, going upstream. But yeah. it, it, in your defense, though, you know, and we had this conversation uh, a couple times. You know, we always get into um, saying what our New Year's resolutions are going to be, and and we've got these great ideas in December after Christmas, and then we come in and we say, this is our New Year's resolution. I'm going to get a gym membership. I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to work out three times a week, and I'm going to lose weight. The average individual only keeps that 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 New Year's resolution for about a week and a half to two weeks, and then after that, they're back doing what it was. Do you know, they do you know what percentage? Do. You know what percentage of people keep their resolutions through the through the entire year? I, I know it's a low number. Do you know how low? Come, come on, give it to me. I'd, I'd probably okay. say about 14 percent. One percent. This is a Forbes study. One percent. This is why I'm against New Year's resolutions. Now, let me let me let me say this. Let me say this. And we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions. Let me just kind of give you the context of how we're going to do this show. We're going to talk about one piece of advice that Xavier and I would give to others about money. And then we're going to share one piece of advice that we're giving ourselves personally. And then we're going to wrap it up with how we keep ourselves and others accountable um, to that. But here's what's um here's what's interesting. I'm not against the idea of resolutions. All resolutions are coming from a position of people recognizing that there's areas in their life that they value, that they that they deem important, that they recognize they need to change or improve upon, right? In fact, you know the three areas uh, for 2024 that most people are, and this is, this is the case for every year, this is not 2024, but you know what the three areas that people are, are making resolutions in mostly? Give, give it to us. What are they? Physical health, mental health, finances. And if we look at physical health, every year people talk about how they're going to lose weight and go to the gym. Yeah. My 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 problem with that is why come out and put a, a New Year's resolution on it? You should be doing that every single day. If it's and a value of, of yours, if it's a value it, of yours, it should drive your lifestyle 100%. Yeah. And, and one of the things that we did was... You know, and, and you asked me a couple of days ago, how do I keep myself accountable for whatever? Well, let's, let's, hold, let's hold. Let's hold. We're going to get to that. Okay. We're gonna All get right. to I was that. I was going to talk about a working out. Oh, you, gotta, well, you, you can on. talk about you can talk about a workout. Don't have we're track. Don't talk about how we're tracking it. But uh, right. Xavier and <laughs> too, I have uh, too bad I can't show them uh, the 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 pad or the big piece of paper. What is that like three by three foot piece of paper on the wall that's tracking our, our weight? I thought you were. I thought you're. You're a physics major, dude. You're better at like shapes, right? That's not a square. It's a rectangle. It's not three by three. All right, two and a half by three. Oh, not even. Not even. <laughs> Xavier and I have. Uh, uh, we have been enjoying food. Let's just put it that way. We've been enjoying food a little bit too much, so we entered into a little bit of a, of a challenge last year. But all right, let, let let's jump into this. 
I'm not going to, we're not going to give you this exhaustive list of, we're going to keep this to finances. Okay. Since obviously that's our, that's our wheelhouse. We're not going to give you an exhaustive list of what you need to do in 2024 to clean up your finances. Uh, Xavier and I were having a conversation about what is, if there's one piece of advice that you would, that you're giving to other people right now, if they were to ask, what would it be? And that, that's kind of how we're going to do the first part of this segment. And then uh, we were talk, just talking about personal things. Like, what are we doing specifically? What's one thing in our life that we want to change um, from a financial standpoint? Um, and so we're going to be a little bit vulnerable with y'all and share those. And then again, we're going to wrap up with how we how we are keeping ourselves accountable to those uh, objectives that we've set for ourselves. So I'm going to start off and just ask uh, Xavier. Xavier, what is one piece of financial advice right now? that you're giving to other people, that's not just important here at the beginning of the year, but it's important to, um, yeah, it's, it's important to integrate into your life. And, and I think that's great, in, integrating this into your life, uh, because this is something that we have to do on a regular basis. And, and so that that piece of advice um, that I have for, for our listeners is budgeting and savings. Right. Oh, well, you just said two, man. It's going to be one. No, no, it, it, it's tied up one. into one. Because in she, order for me to she, meet... Let, no, no, no. Let me let me explain. If if I know that I'm coming up and I need to save more, and and that that piece of advice is for individuals to begin to save more. Well, in order to save, I have to budget because I've got to know what I have so that I can save it. So it 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 sounds like two, but it's really one. Okay. So sit down and look at what your budget is, and then from that budget, my reckon what I want you guys to do is to come back and put together a saving strategy and begin saving more. So what comes first, budgeting or saving? Budgeting. Budgeting comes first. So you would say budgeting. the most important thing that people can integrate is budgeting. Correct. Okay. Right. Look at what your look at what your finances are. Look at what what goes in, what comes in, what goes out and put together a strategy and so start let's get, saving let's, more. Let's get let's get real tactical here, okay? Let's get real tactical to say everyone's we talk to people all the time and um, everyone knows that they need to have a, a budget. And a lot of people carry a lot of shame and, and, and guilt like, oh, I know I should have a budget, but I don't have one. So tactically, all right, you tell me to do a budget, man, I hate budget. Oh. I push back on budgets. Where do I even t give me give me like the first next step? My my first step that I did was was sit down and look at what are my expenses. You know, I'm I'm okay. looking at what am I spending on to AT and T. What do I spend with AT and T? Okay, so you're looking you're 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 looking historically. What have you been spending? Correct. Okay. And through that, I've I've realized that after looking at that, I'm paying for an iPad that nobody has used. I think it's fifteen dollars a month, ten or fifteen dollars a month, yeah. that I'm spending on an iPad that no one has used in two years. Mm. So I'm uncovering things that are that I'm paying for that we're not using. Mm -hmm. You know, then I go through and start looking at uh, the direct TV bill. Right. Mm -hmm. And and all the subscriptions um, that we're now forced to pay. Yeah. So go back and look at what your expenses are. That's the start of, of finding money. Yeah. Um, so you, you kind of stole my one piece of advice this is you know i thought you were going somewhere else but you stole my one piece of advice on um uh on budgeting so let me one thing i would give to others is i'm not even going to say budget i'm going to say um people need to become spending aware they need to become aware how they're spending their money so let, let's let's keep talking about this a little bit and then i want to hop mm -hmm. into your savings point because that's important too um you know so basically what you're saying is people need to be aware of of how money is leaving their bank account? What are they spending yes. it on? How you know? What are their trends in spending? Um, is that is that what I'm? I don't want to put that, words in your mouth. No, ab absolutely. That that is it. You know, how are you spending? What are the trends in your spending? Because we can't we can't move to the next step until we understand what those trends are. Yeah, yeah. You can't. Uh, it's super important to understand your habits to see them face. And this is this is. I'm gonna tell you. This is a um. This is a painful exercise for a lot of people to sit down. So the, here's the tactics. Here's the tactics, y'all. This is to, to do what Xavier and I are talking about. 
basically what you want to do is my recommendation would be take a look at your last three months worth of, of spending, your credit card, your bank account, and just, just make a mental note. It helps if you can export it, put in a spreadsheet, throw some categories on, on where your different expenditures are. But just before you even make a decision on what you should spend money on, just become fully aware of what you've been spending your money on. That exercise alone will drive and motivate a lot of your decisions on how you should be spending or how, uh, you know, where you want to be spending more. All right, absolutely. Okay, so spending aware, we both agree that spending aware, since we're going to talk about two different things here, you know, mine and yours, our first kind of, mm -hmm. kind of, kind of uh, intersected, but you threw out two, so you kind of cheated. That's all right. It's okay. Um, they go, the they go, hand, they go hand in hand like is, a glove. Is save. All right. So we talked about spending aware budget and then save. Talk to me about saving. What, what do you, what do you, what do you think in there, man? Uh, sounds obvious, right? It, it does save sound more, obvious. Right. In fact, spending and saving, those are actually within the financial um, resolutions that people make. It always has to do with spend less, save more. Right. And, and a lot of our listeners and, and, um, clients have heard us talk, say this word purpose. And so when I'm talking savings, you, you got to have a purpose for, for what you're saving for, where are you putting your money? What are you saving it for? And I think if, if, if you have those two in line and you understand those two, it makes savings, saving money easier. So create that, have that purpose for what you're going to be saving for. You know, all too often I hear, well, I can't do this because, you know, I, I can't put money into my 401k and I can't do that because I've got all this other stuff that I'm worried about. I just purchased a car. I'm, I'm trying to buy a house. I've got to go out there and purchase a new stove. Yes, a stove. I had a client come to me and tell me that they could not put money into their 401k because they have to go out and buy a stove. Now the stove is twelve, thirteen thousand dollars. Whoa! Yes, and so my response to him was, "How often do you cook?" Because I didn't <laughs> know you. I didn't know you cook. A, you spend thirteen thousand dollars, thirteen thousand on a stove, and you have two hundred dollars of Uber Eats fees every month. <laughs> Explain that one. <laughs> so, but it looks nice. So. It, it, you have to have that purpose. And once you gather that purpose on, on what you're trying to accomplish, it allows, it makes it easier to begin saving money. Yeah. Yeah. When, when, when you, when you, when you identify something to save for, it becomes a motivation. I want to save for travel. I want to save for my retirement. I want to save because I want to change jobs because I hate where I'm at and I want to go somewhere where I'm appreciated or, or it's more life giving for me, or I want to retire early, whatever it might be. Uh, when you have that purpose, when you, when you, when you identified that thing, that's important, it's easy to, to save towards. Mm -hmm. Correct. And so Eric, since you're actually telling us, you just talked about a bunch of purposes for savings. Yeah. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. So let's move on to personal. Cause this oh. kind of sound, this kind of sounds like what your personal goal for 2024 is me. Yes, you. Yeah, so, me. so tell us, what is your personal goal for 2024? Yeah, one of my personal financial goals for 2024 is to spend more on experiences with my family, and I'm not talking about like, you know, these crazy mountaintop experiences. Like, we're gonna go hike Everest or nothing, nothing crazy like that. Um, you know, my wife's a teacher, and um. She has days off from school, holidays off from school. So what I'm trying to be do is be more intentional on taking time off when she's off. Because what I find is when she's off and the kids are off, she'll tend to do impromptu things with the kids. And um, and I'm always working. I'm busy. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not intentional about taking the time off. So I want to make sure that I'm purposeful and intentional um, to – to design my calendar, my work time around hers, since since you know she's kind of dictated to when she can and can't work as a, as a teacher, and I have a little bit more flexibility in my work calendar. I want to be intentional on making sure that uh, I'm off when she's off. Obviously, I can't take three months off during the summer, but I think you get the idea. Whether it's hey, we're going ice skating in Baton Rouge today. Are you working? Can you come? I want to be in the position to say yeah, 
I'm coming. Right. Or, hey, we're going yeah, to now the that zoo. ice skating obviously isn't on the river or a lake. That's in, indoor. Indoor. And I didn't ice skate because last time I skated um, on wheels, like I fell backwards. And I'm pretty sure that's one of the things that did my shoulder in. Um, so I don't I don't have uh, I'm six, three on. I have terrible balance. So I stay on I stay on uh, I stay on the ground with, with shoes on, <laughs> not, not skates. Uh, but still driving up and being around and, and sharing that experience and creating memories. There's a cost to that, whether I'm not working or there's a, there's a dollar, you know, monetary cost to it. And I just want to be in a position to, to create those experiences, those memories with, uh, with my family more intentionally. You're going to have me have, uh, once Maureen listens to this, I'm going to have to add that to uh, one of my goals too, because that's one thing that she's been telling me. Do we, do, we need, do we need take... to cut this out? Should we go back and, and, and edit this out? <laughs> just so, just so I can change I can change my, my personal goal for you, Xavier. Well, I, I think this is going to, her listening to this and, and Jen listening to this is going to hold both of us accountable now mm. because Maureen's going to want that as well. Does Maureen so, listen to you? She doesn't listen. She, she hears you enough. Occasionally, she will listen to me at work. I'll make, sure she, I'll make sure she listens to this one. So Maureen's, Maureen's working from home right now. Um, she had plantar fasciitis uh, surgery two and a half, three weeks ago. So she's working from home. So I'm in the home office working and, and I can hear her listening to something in, in the background. And so I get up and I go in there. I'm like, Maureen, what are you, what are you listening to? You're watching a, a program? She's like, no, I, I'm listening to a podcast while I work. It helps me. The music kind of distracts me. So this podcast is is just helping me to concentrate on what I'm doing. She listens to your voice. Is that, was it your podcast? Was it you talking? No, it, is it your voice, does your voice soothe, soothe her? It, not this time. It was one of these <laughs> mysteries. Um, like murder mysteries? Murder mystery that she's listening to. So oh, man. I don't know if that's good or bad for me. So All right. I, but what's your one thing, man? What's, what's the one, um, the one piece of advice, financial advice that you're giving yourself uh, this year? That it that that goal that I have for myself is saving more, okay. Purposely saving more this year. So coming up with a goal, and being intentional about where I'm putting money and how I'm saving money. So the advice you're giving others is the same advice you're giving yourself. A absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So what's your process for saving more? Is there like a, a shortcut or a hack? that gets you there? Like once you, once you, you identified what you want to save for, what's like, what's something really tactical that you can do or people can do or th that you're doing. So we're talking about you to, to do that, make sure that you're doing it. It goes back to the advice that I gave um, for this year. Mm -hmm. um, I sat down and I've gone through all of my expenses. I've looked at my habits. Okay. Um, you know, Maureen is sitting down and, and looking at where her spending comes from and what her habits are. And once we do that, now we can we can sit together and we're looking at that. And now we're putting together that that budget. And so I now the I now know the disposable cash that I have and I can go out there and, and decide here's the purpose. Yeah. Um, my daughter's going to a Catholic high school next year. So I know I have additional expenses. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. rather be able to save and cut a check for that tuition rather than taking the loan out and paying whatever the interest is over the yeah. course of that 10, 11, 12 months. Yeah. So I have purpose. And because of that purpose, I'm going to be intentional about where I put money. That's good. That's good. All right. So we've talked about the one piece of advice that we'd give to others for this year. We've talked about the, the piece of advice that we're, we're kind of giving ourselves and following ourselves. Let's talk about how we keep ourselves accountable to, to this. Um, what are you doing to make sure that you stick to this uh, advice that you're 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 giving yourself? I think the obvious one is now everybody out here listening to this podcast <laughs> is going to hold us accountable to it. Sim yeah, everybody, similar Xavier, Xavier's email address is Xavier <laughs> at plan-wisely.com. Shoot him an email every week. Make sure he's uh he's saving for um high school tuition for his daughter. There we go. Hey, it, it kind of goes back to our conversation we had this summer about the car, right? You, you, oh, yeah. you put you put something out there and, and now you have to hold yourself accountable because you have everyone listening to you and everyone is asking you, how's that goal coming? He's referring yeah. to, yeah, he's referring to uh, 
we we recorded a series of podcasts where he would uh, uh, where Xavier was driving his his old hoopty beat up 2008 Honda Accord and and he wouldn't buy a new car cuz he had a real specific goal he was working towards. Yeah, y'all can go back and and listen um to those. And and it's very interesting how it came up. Um but by saying that on the podcast, I now became accountable mm. for what I was doing. Um so is this so, your accountability, the fact that you're sharing it here publicly on the podcast? Is that is that the only bit of of a, accountability? It, it's not the only bit of, of accountability. I have yeah. it written down. I know what I want to do. I'm writing it down. And if I write it down, I can now see it on a regular basis yeah. rather than just saying I'm going to do something. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, you want to write it and you want to have it out so that you know where it is and you're looking at it. Yeah. And, then, and then get that accountability partner, right? My yeah. wife, my daughter, Eric. Um, these are all my accountability partners now because Eric and I have these conversations regarding our goals on a regular basis. And Grace and Maureen understand that, hey, look, if we're doing these things, then we have the opportunity to do or have experiences together. So yeah. th- that's my accountability. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And Eric, what what uh, what about you? Tell us yours. Yeah, a, a couple things. The first thing, um, again... The goal is making sure that my calendar aligns with my wife's calendar. I keep a digital calendar, but I'm a very visual person, and it's too easy to ignore my digital calendar. I was talking to a a financial planner buddy of mine, um, Brian Hartman, and every year he's been been buying this calendar. It's called the Big Ass Calendar. It is a physical calendar. It is huge. You put it on your wall. It's a – let me see if I'm better with dimensions. It's about – I'm looking at it right now. It's about two by three. Okay, it's a rectangle, not a square. And and essentially every month is listed out horizontally and it's day by day. Um, January 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, let out, uh, written out horizontally. And it comes with these little post it notes. I'm holding it up. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. Um, these small post it notes that fit into a daily square and they're different colors. And orange is my color for when Jen's off of work. So on this calendar, I have for the days that I know that she is off of work that are scheduled, I have an orange um, post-it note in there so I can visually see when she's off. So what that does is um, it makes me plan towards those days. If I know that she's off, I'm going to keep a, I'm going to keep a a light work day in case she's doing something. Sometimes I'll work from home just to be around, just to be present, Um, but I won't schedule. I'll block it on my digital calendar so no one can schedule me. So that physical reminder forces me to put it on my digital calendar so no one can schedule me. Um, but that that's that's the number one thing that I'm doing. In that calendar, you're consistently looking at it because it's behind the camera right now, correct? Yeah, that's right. So when there, you're on yeah. the when you're on the phone, when you're working, you have that visually up I on do. the wall. I do. When I'm scheduling clients, um I'm I'm looking at it. I'm I'm double checking, I'm making sure. I also have a, a red post-it note. This is kind of part of that is I want to make sure that I'm intentional in spending time one-on-one with with my wife or with our friends, right? So I can see I have a red tab just to remind me. And then I have a green tab that are my conferences. When am I going to be out of town? Um, again, it's a physical, visual reminder um, for me to keep me accountable to that. So you bought this big-ass calendar for yourself, That's right. correct? That's right. And I get this. Little bitty little... calendar. <laughs> you like, man, a bunch of little calendar. Every every month has one little financial topic right. that we can focus on. Don't, I mean, you, you go so, buy your own calendar, hey, man. So I'm the one that's visually that that has vision problems, and you got me the small calendar to put on my wall on the other side of the the, the office, and you got yourself the big ass. Okay, if you can't if you're not watching. It's... I've got air quotes. So big ass calendar. It's big. It's big. It is. It is it's big. Okay. So. Let, let's let's sit here for a second. Let's sit here for a second. I got Xavier a Christmas gift. It's a calendar, <laughs> and it's this beautiful calendar. There's a, a an influencer in the financial space, and he does these little doodles, these little drawings, and each drawing it's it's like a it's like a a, a financial topic. And I thought, well, how great would this be if we could have themes that Xavier and I could talk about these themes in this calendar? So I gave him one of these calendars. Let's 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 talk about. What Xavier got me for uh, a gift for Christmas? Oh, oh, wait a minute. What? Nothing. Friendship. Oh, Lord. Friendship. 
brotherhood oh lord camaraderie friendship brotherhood i am i am uh i'm <laughs> i am moved <laughs> i'm about to tear up javi i'm tearing up all right guys look um I don't know if you made resolutions and if you did, I'm not poo-pooing your resolutions. I, I, you know, I, I do think that there's something valuable about being reflective mm -hmm. about things in our life that we want to improve. I think health finances uh, tend to be very valuable things, things that we find value in um, as people. And I do think that we should be looking uh, to make improvements in those areas. My contention with resolutions is they, they rarely work. Um, uh, on the financial side, y'all know Xavier and I are certified financial planners, okay? Part of what we do and what we incorporate into our work with our clients is we because we recognize the importance of changing behaviors. And all a resolution is, it's, it's a behavior change, right? We recognize the importance in engaging uh, people, particularly our clients, in behavior change as it deals with their finances, all right? So if you are someone who's like, man, I've got these these things I want to change in my finances. Um, that's part of what we do. That's part of the work that Xavier and I incorporate into how we interact with our clients. It's not just about let's save more for retirement. Let's uh, you know, let's let's invest more. Uh, that's a part of what we do. It's an important part of what we do. But I would say almost a a more meaningful part of what we do with our clients. The stuff that the feedback that we hear from our clients, the things that give us both life in in what we do is seeing our clients identify something that they want to change with their finances and coming alongside of them, putting together a strategy and executing on that strategy, uh, whatever it might be. So if that if that defines you, you're someone who wants help with any of the things that we've talked about today, cash flow management, save more, being intentional about spending on experiences, that's part of the work we do. And we would love to have a conversation with you uh, if that's something that 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 moves you. So in 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 parting, in the party. two thing in party, the two things that I would say is for 2024. Remember two words, and and um, I know Eric speaks about these often: purpose, purpose, and intentionality. Love it. Love you, brother. Purpose, Javi. You are honorary Cuban, brother. Peace. I love it.